Hello and welcome to the Petticoated Swashbuckler. My name is Marin, and today we're going to make a dress. I have this fabric. It is a red rayon, kind of almost like burgundy red. It looks a lot brighter on camera than it is in real life and it's got black dots, black polka dots and it's really beautiful and I actually bought this uh, half a year ago at least. It was intended to become the lining of my coat, my 1930s coat that I made last winter. And by the way, <clears throat> I'm sorry if my if I sound weird, that's because I do. I have a cold. <laughs> it's uh, sorry. I know I sound very husky and weird. Um, summer cold. Also, by the way, if you hear weird noises, we're having like the, a mad summer storm out here now, so you might hear thunder. I don't know. Anyway, we are. Or I am, and you are coming along if you want to, making a 1920s capsule wardrobe for a domestic servant. And we have made quite a lot of garments by now. We've made um, some underwear, we've made some kind of more like uniform wear. I made a, um, a, a blouse and a suit and a hat. Um, but you're not even a domestic servant, it's not always um, kind of on duty. Uh, sometimes she gets a little bit of time off, sometimes she gets to go out have a dinner with a gent, sometimes she goes to church, sometimes she visits her parents and for that you would need something that's... Um, I've seen it referred to as an afternoon dress or a tea dress or dinner dress uh, and it's basically a, f a day dress but a little bit fine and I thought this would be perfect I love the colour I love it's got a very nice drape to it it's quite heavy because I've got a lot of it but the drape like it's a little bit heavy but it's still quite lightweight so it's got a very nice drape to it very 20s drape to it and what I I want to is I want to try and capture because the event that I'm going to wear this for is set in 1929 and I've seen a lot of of dresses especially in this little book that I'll put a picture of here uh, that I've shown you before uh, that um, it is it kind of captures that kind of last <clears throat> it's that last little bit of the 20s where the silhouette is still quite straight and it's still quite sort of um, you still have to uh, kind of um, live with the fact that all your clothes are quite straight and baggy but there's a little I won't say that there's more definition to the waist but it's less definition to the hips so instead of that kind of um, silhouette where you have a blouse that reaches your hip levels and then kind of is taken in and then you have a skirt that goes down you get just a very straight um, figure I suppose silhouette with just hinting at the kind of the low low waistline and I want to do that I'm going to do it by pleating I think so I want some pleats that will go all the way down uh, stitched down pleats all the way down to my hip level and then I'll just not have stitching anymore so the pleats will be able to flare out and give me a little bit more uh, kind of uh, <sighs> volume I suppose a little more movement from the hip down I do not have a pattern for this I do however have a pattern block I attended a workshop last autumn no sorry last spring uh, where I had some help and made a beautiful pattern block for my body uh, it's a pattern for the front for the back and for the sleeves and I think I'm going to try and do that, use that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, pieces that are the length that I want them. 
and then I want to pre-pleat everything before I cut out any fabric, any pattern. So I will actually go in and like pleat, make the pleats where I want them, stitch those down, and then I will cut out uh, my dress from the already pleated pieces. Um, I haven't done that before. It might not work. It's it's kind of reminiscent of how I made the back of my negligee and my 18th century uh, pleated back nightgowns uh, that have a link somewhere in this sphere. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Do you want to come along? So the first thing I did was uh, to pleat. Um, I managed to get three box pleats on each side uh, of each uh, piece. So six on the front, six on the back. And then I stitched all of those down, which took an age. Um, I then cut out my pieces, I uh, overlocked or zigzagged the edges and then I stitched the front to the back. I hung it on the mannequin just to make sure it looked okay. Then I stitched the sleeves together. Uh, stopping about 10 centimeters uh, over the cuff. I made some self fabric bias tape uh, and uh, hemmed the cuff opening with that. I also cut some cuffs and uh, uh, pleated the sleeves to those. Um, it didn't need much pleating. It's just it's just like a hint of a bishop sleeve. I then stitched the cuffs onto the cuff edge of the sleeve.
I close the kind of short edges of the cuff uh, by hand. I made some button loops or some thread loops for the buttons on the cuffs. I attached some buttons. I uh, used more of that self fabric bias tape around the uh, neckline where I also attached a button and a thread loop, just like for the sleeves. I then stitched the sleeves into the uh, body of the dress. And with that, my cute little summery frock is done. Uh, just in time for a little bit of frolicking on the veranda. Thank you. 